Honestly, I'm probably the biggest fanboy of Ben Greenfield. He taught me more about health than anybody else. And he can teach you more as well. And I highly encourage you to check out his content, his articles. But for now, I have distilled his whole blog to his top 10 rules for health volume 2. By the way, my name is Albert. If you are new here and you want to optimize your diet to burn fat, live long and feel awesome, consider subscribing. Number 10 is to shiver. I am hypocritical though. I'm in a very thick jacket when it's like 20 degrees Celsius in here. But I will face that because your inability to get cold and to have goosebumps is actually very bad for you. Imagine if you were living 2000 years ago. How often would you not be cold? Only during those summer days for like half a day. So it goes against our ancestry to adjust the room temperature every time we feel the tiniest bit of coldness. As you may have noticed, us humans are very dumb. Like we think that processed foods is good for us because we perceive it that way. We think that news are good for us. and the same way we believe that hot and, 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 and good temperature is good for us. While it might not be a good idea to take a cold shower for 5 hours straight, it definitely isn't harmful to get cold. People say that because it is uncomfortable to get cold. But it has so many benefits. And the main one is fat loss because it converts your white fat into brown fat which you can just easily flush out. And your body has to produce its own temperature, which boosts your metabolism and increases your caloric expenditure so you will get away with eating more. And also with eating more carbohydrates, because cold also decreases the blood sugar spike. And Ben himself tries to get cold for at least one hour every morning, tries to get goosebumps specifically. In addition to his two to three hot and cold contrast showers, of course. Number nine is something that I don't do yet, but it is something that I will definitely incorporate in the future and this is tracking your HRV. I am gonna track my HRV, you are gonna track your HRV. HRV or heart rate variability is a very important number that tells you when you can work out and when you should rest and when you can eat and stuff. It tells you when you can do those deep work sessions and when you should probably take a time off. Knowing that is so good for you if you think about it and it's so amazing because now you cannot not, now you won't judge yourself for having low energy when it's so obvious when you wake up with for example very low heart rate variability so he not only gets to decide whether he should or should not work or he, he should or should not work out but he also gets to see what is improving and what is uh, decreasing his HRV and through that he finds what habits he should stick to and what habits he should let go of. Number eight is that he protects himself from junk light, especially LED lights and especially in the evening. In his house he actually has red or almost infrared light bulbs and also he uses his red light therapy panels which we talked about in the last episode. On his phone and his computer you can see an app called Iris, which changes his screen temperature. And it is very similar to Efflux, but it also encounters the, it also accounts with moon and stuff, moon fluctuations. And I personally use Efflux because it's free, but if you have money for that and you want it kind of automatic, I, actually Efflux is good enough. Actually, it's probably better than Iris now that I think about it. On mobile phone, Flux doesn't seem to be working, but I have an app called Twilight, so I have red phones throughout the day, every day, and it's amazing. And honestly, I typically get headaches in the studio, and I discovered that it's because of these, you know, very strong light bulbs. It's in a soft box which should make it soft but it doesn't. But yeah, number seven is that he eats a ton of herbs and wild plants. Each plant has its own benefits but eating a huge variety of plants I think it's very important specifically because it improves your gut diversity. Unless you are a carnivore I think this is very good for your gut. The more types of plants you eat the more the 
the bigger the variety of your gut bacteria and the healthier the gut. He recommends learning about what types of plants around you are edible. And you might be surprised, but almost everything is. Like when I go for a walk after food, I typically eat like five plants. Dandelions are very good. Then send me Kraski. I don't know how to say that one in English. But yeah, it's really cool and they are free and they taste good actually. And they should not even break a fast. Number six is to hunt your own meat. He is a hunter and now many people have a problem with that. But I actually think it might be good for the planet. Of course, if you don't have a license and you say hunt lions, then it's obviously bad. But if you do it in a good way, like Ben Greenfield does, then I think you are ethical. He's a Christian, so after killing the animal, he also prays him the best. He also cries about it. But he says that the meat is, is, is deserved. It is much better because he had to work for it. He didn't just buy it. And of course, it's a very high quality grass fed, grass finished meat typically. Number five tip from Ben Greenfield is essential amino acids. Ben Greenfield claims that BCAAs are not very good for building muscle. And for example, eggs have much better amino acid profile than BCAA supplement. I don't know about that one. And I think BCAAs are still very good for building muscle but they are not necessary and EAAs are much more powerful. He takes a brand that he himself invented. It's called Keon Aminos. And uh, he does have financial interest in that, but I do think he's a trustworthy guy. And so I do believe they work. He has a very good article on that. So if you are interested, you can check it out. But in short, I believe he supplements with 10 to 20 of those one gram pills of EAAs before workout and sometimes after workout as well. Number four is walk after food. And I think I mentioned this one in the last episode, but in short, it is probably the most important habit that you can make for longevity. He not only walks around 10 to 15,000 steps a day, but he makes sure to walk around after food, especially when you eat carbohydrates, because those spike your blood sugars the highest. And again, the more stable your blood sugar is throughout the day, the better your health is probably gonna be, especially cardiovascular health. If you don't walk after food, give it five minutes. And those five minutes, I promise you, will be the most productive five minutes of your day. Number three is that Ben Greenfield eats all his carbs in the evening. Not all of them. He eats a salad as his lunch with like 20 grams of net carbohydrates. But overall, he eats around 100 to 200 grams of carbs a day. And all of them, besides the salad, he eats in the evening. Two main reasons for that. One is ketosis, because when he eats those carbohydrates, he gets kicked out of ketosis and he feels bad. But it's already the evening and then he goes to bed and he already wakes up in ketosis, so has a lot of energy before the dinner. Second reason is sleep quality. If you are on a ketogenic diet, you may have noticed a decrease in sleep quality. And the reason is that your body doesn't produce enough tryptophan. In order for it to produce tryptophan, it needs carbohydrates. And the later you eat those carbohydrates, uh, of course, the more tryptophan that you will produce before bed. Number two is compression. Compression gadgets can be very good for improving your blood flow and that leads to better recovery after a workout. So after a workout, Ben Greenfield wears compression socks and I actually have them on right now, I can show you. It looks like that and it compresses your leg so that it is it feels the pressure and it produces more blood or there is more blood flow in that leg. For that same reason, you can also use compression pants and compression shirt. If you are rich, but you gotta be very rich, you can try Normitech. Normitech is like a suit you get in and it really squeezes your muscle. And it's very good for recovery. You can try it for legs and hands, but as I say, it's very expensive. It's incredibly expensive. I don't know the price right now, but it costs a lot. But if you are a bodybuilder, like professional one, I think it's a great investment because you will be able to 
you know, recover faster, so lift more. Number one is foundation training. It's something like stretching. It's a training method that takes you around 10 minutes and he does it every morning. Why would he? Well, because it is probably the best type of exercise to improve your posture. It was invented by Eric Goodman. You can look this guy up. He used to have problems with his spine and nobody could fix them. So he invented the training method that, that did fix it. The whole reason to do foundation training is to decompress your spine and really lift everything up so that your organs can breathe. I don't know where I ended because I filmed this video like two weeks ago, but yeah, foundation training is amazing. It is hard, but it is very worth it. And if I didn't mention it yet, Ben does it for 10 minutes every single day. So yeah, these are Ben Greenfield's top 10 tips for health volume two. If you haven't seen the first episode yet, definitely check it out. It's packed with information. If you like this type of videos and you want to check out other episodes on other smart people, click somewhere here on the screen. It's free. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time.